Hello, Denizen Vibhadeep. This is actually the last section, the last section of our course. 5.5, that's the end of, uh, that's the end of uh, Miramar Math 121. Uh, so here we are. Let's uh, get down to it. So you've all heard of a dude named uh, Isaac Newton. Um, I know they named figs, the fig after him, like Fig Newton. That was a joke. And, but anyway, Isaac Newton is, I, I, th I find my jokes hilariously funny. I don't know if anyone else does. Isaac Newton is often called the founder of calculus. So he invented calculus. So what did he do? You know, integrals were already done before Isaac Newton. Derivatives were done before Isaac Newton. Limits were done before Isaac Newton. All this stuff that we learned was done before Isaac Newton. So what did he do? What, what did he do that was so, you know, you know, great that made him the founder? You know, even all the stuff was done uh, before him. What he did is he made a connection. He connected the idea of a derivative to the idea of an integral, meaning to say that he showed that he made a connection between the integral, the definite integral, meaning the area under the curve, and the antiderivative, and and that is so fundamental to calculus that it's called the fundamental theorem of calc fundamental theorem of calculus, and that's what we're going to get to right now. So here we go, the fundamental theorem of calculus, and it's on page this one right here. Fundamental theorem of calculus: If f is a continuous function on an interval a b and capital F is any antiderivative of F, then the integral from A to B of F of X dx, which in other words, this is the definite integral. So the area under the curve, Y equals F of X, the area under the curve from X equals A to X equals B, that little, that area is equal to capital F of B, the number up there, minus capital F of A, the number down there, which means if I have a definite integral, all I gotta do, is find the antiderivative of the function inside, plug in the B number, plug in the A number, and subtract. How? That is incredible. So we don't no longer have to. So if we want to find the area under the curve, which is very important for a lot of reasons, um, all we got to do, instead of drawing all these little rectangles and going crazy and limit all this kind of stuff that we've been doing, all we got to do is get the antiderivative, subtract, excuse me, get the Get the antiderivative, plug in, subtract, pow, we're done. That is the fundamental theorem of calculus, and that is incredible how much easier uh, this makes everything. So let's, let's look at an example. So we want to find the integral from 1 to 2 of 2x plus 3e to the x minus 4 over x. And <clears throat> so basically, to look at the picture of this in Desmos, this, this, this is the curve y equals 2x plus three e to the x minus four over x. That's what we're talking about. And it's this, it's this uh, uh, big uh, red line right up here. That, that's x equals one, that's x equals two. So it's kind of this like, big spiky area. It goes up pretty high. And instead of having to draw rectangles, there's a big massive pain. Uh, All we're gonna do is take some antiderivatives and we are going to be in business. So here we go. The antiderivative of two x is is x squared over two, but we're multiplying it times two, so the two is going to cancel. The antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x, so we got three e to the x. The antiderivative of one over x is ln x, so we got minus four ln x. The plus c, uh, we don't need the plus c when we do a definite, a definite integral. And the reason is because since we're subtracting one, um, because f of two, capital F of two has a plus C, capital F of one has a plus C, the C's cancel when I do the subtraction. So just don't worry about the, the C's. Uh, or, or if you wanna say set C equal to zero. Either way, my antiderivative is X squared plus three e to the X minus four ln X. This is my antiderivative right here. Now, all I gotta do is take the fundamental theorem of calculus, and I do, I, I plug two into this function here and I plug one and get some number. I, I actually wound up getting 23.39, you can go over the calculator. Or, and then I plug one into this function over here and I get 9.15, do the subtraction, the answer is 14.24.
So the area under the curve of this weird function that I showed you on Desmos uh, between one and two is going to be 14.24. And that, my friends, is fabulous. I didn't have to draw any rectangles. I didn't have to do anything. All I had to do, I, I, I shouldn't say nothing. I didn't have to do any drawing of anything. All I had to do is take an antiderivative, plug in, subtract, pal, I got my answer. Now, don't plug the two into this here, the original function. You're plugging the two into the antiderivative function. And you're plugging the one into the antiderivative function. And that's what you're plugging and subtracting. All righty, that was loads of fun. Now, let's do another one. Here's another weird funky curve. Y equals X over X squared plus 10. Y equals, and now all we got to do is take the antiderivative. Now, this red line, this is what the function looks like. Y equals X over X squared plus 10. So we want the area from 0, 0 up to, up to 5, you know, up to X equals 5. This little area, this sort of thin horizontal area up there. Uh, that's what we want, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, all righty, so let's uh, get to work. Where are we here? Let's go back to the... So now, to find the, the antiderivative, hmm, I can't break this up into two fractions because that I can only do if the plus sign is on the top, not if the plus sign is on the bottom. What I can do here is, um, is substitution. Because if I let u equal x squared plus 10, so u is equal to x squared plus 10, then du is going to be 2x dx. Now, I have an x dx. Uh, so what I want to do is, is take the 2 and divide by it. So you get 1 half du is equal to x dx. So the, so the x dx becomes 1 half du. And the one over x squared plus 10 becomes one over u. Now, this is just ln u. And ln u uh, plus c, that's my, that's my antiderivative. Now, I'm going to back substitute the x squared plus 10. And now, all I got to do is uh, plug in, and I get my answer. So I plugged 5. I pl now, I'm not plugging 5 into the original function. I'm plugging 5 into, this, into the antiderivative. So I plugged 5 into 1 half ln x squared plus 10. And that gives me ln of 35, and I plug zero in, and it gives me ln 10, uh, all, you know, times one half, of course. And, and after I crunch it out, subtract it, uh, I wound up getting 0 0.626. And that is that, and that is fabulous. That is absolutely fabulous. And that is how we do that. That's how the professionals do it. Okay, let's uh, move on. Now, I want to just make a point here. Remember at the end of this, we, we, we did a U substitution and then we back substituted to get it back in terms of X. You could do it that way if you want, or there's an alternative way you could do it. And really they're kind of the same thing, which just do, I, I would just say do whichever one is easier for you. Um, what I could do is I could, instead of back substituting, I could leave everything in terms of U but when I do that, I can't have the zero and the five because the zero and the five were parameters designed for X. Once I change the variable from X to U, then the zero, five are not relevant. So what I have to do is I kind of have to translate, if you will, or transpose, if you will, what the zero, what, what X zero and X five would mean in terms of U. Well, that's not hard to do because if U is equal to X squared plus 10, well, if X is equal to five, then U is going to be, uh, 25 plus 10, which is 35. If x is equal to zero, u is going to be zero plus 10, which is 10. So all I got to do is I, I, I just write one half, the integral from 10 to 35 of one over u du, which is one half ln u, uh, evaluated between 35 and 10. This means evaluated between 35 and 10. Now I just do the subtraction. And as, and as you see, I'm going to get the same numbers. Oh, that's weird. Where did, where did the rest of it go? Um, was, oops, okay. And that winds up being one half ln 35 minus ln 10, which is the same uh, point, 0 0.626. So these are kind of the same thing. Um, they amount to the same thing. Uh, which way, do whichever way uh, you find. You know, a lot of times there's two methods, two ways you can do something. So there's not necessarily a better way or worse way. A lot of, I just tell my students, do whichever way you find easier. Sometimes students just like one method better than another method. Sometimes it depends on the problem. A lot of times the problem, sometimes a certain problem will just sort of like, you know, it's just easier one way or the other way, but whatever. Anyways, uh, let's do this next one here. The integral from negative four to one of radical five minus t dt. 
Well, I'm going to do again a u substitution. I'm going to let u equal 5 minus t. That's what's inside the square root. du is equal to negative dt because uh, du, I'm getting that from this equation here. I just have the negative t. Now, if t is equal to 1, now t is going from negative 4 to 5. But when t equals 1, then u is equal to 5 minus 1, which is 4. When t is equal to negative 4, u is equal to 5 minus negative 4, which is positive 9. So, so, now we're going to get to that, and we're going to use that fact in a, in, a, in a minute or two. First, let's do the integral. So this is equal now to the integral. This, this is now equal to the square root of 5 minus t is um, square root of u. The dt, I'm going to put a negative here and a negative there. The two negatives cancel, which is good. And, and now... Uh, but the negative dt is equal to positive du, so it's negative, the integral from 9 to 4 of red uh, u uh, du. And this is, I'm going to rewrite this as an exponent, u to the 1 half power, uh, u to the 1 half power du, integrate this, u to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves, value between uh, nine, you know, 9 and 4, 4 and whichever, and um, crunch, 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 uh, plug in, subtract, blah, blah, blah. And I wound up getting 38 over 3, which is approximately 12.667. And that is awesome. Okay. Here we have a company manufactures X HDTVs per month. The monthly marginal profit is given by P prime of X is equal to 165 minus uh, 0.1X. And X goes between 0 and 4,000. That those are just the numbers that we have. The company is currently manufacturing 1,500 HDTVs per month, but is planning to increase production. Um, find the change in the monthly profit if, pro if monthly production is increased to 1,600 HDTVs. Before I, I get to this uh, solution, or I get to solving this, I just want to ask, what did Yoda say when he saw himself on 4K TV. HDMI. Anyway, um, P of 16, so we wanna find P of 1600 minus P of 1500. That's essentially what we wanna do because uh, we wanna find the change from 15 to 16. So change of production. So um, profit, I mean. So we wanna find P of 1600 minus P of 1500. That's gonna give us a change, uh, you know, going from 15 to 16. Well, that's the same thing as the integral from zero, from uh, 1500 to 1600 of 165 minus 0 .0, uh, x, 0 0.01x dx. Now I just use the fundamental theorem of calculus. I take the antiderivative, 165 becomes 165x. 0.1x becomes 0.05x squared. This is 0.1 times x squared over two. 0.1 divided by 2 is 0 0.05. Evaluated between 1,500 and 1,600 it just means I plug in uh, 1,600 for x and over here and over there. I get, I'm going to crunch out and get some number. I plug in 1,500 for x uh, and x squared over here. Get a different number. So, so the first, my first one, I'm going to get 30, 136,000. The next one, I'm going to get 135,000. Subtract, and I get 1,000. So increase. So now I'm going to just say in one sentence. Increasing monthly production from 1,500 units to 1,600 units will increase the monthly profit by $1,000. That's what we're trying to say here. That is awesome. Now, there's something called the average value of a continuous function uh, over integral a to b. There is, there is the function f. When I, when I you know, look at it over this whole interval, it's going to take on many different values. What's the average, I'm putting air quotes, what's the average value that it has? It's kind of a funny way of saying it, but uh, what, is that, what is the average value going to be? Well, it's a very simple formula. It's the integral from a to b of f of x dx. So basically it's the area under the entire curve in that, over that interval. And I'm dividing it by the length of the interval because one, one over b minus a, that's the length of the interval. And that will give me the average value of this function, which is pretty amazing. So let's find the average value I have a function f of x equals x minus 3x squared. And I want to look at that over the interval negative 1, comma 2. So 1 over b minus a, that's 1 over 2 minus negative 1. So that's just 1 third. 
times the integral from negative one to two of the function x minus three x squared dx. Now the picture of it is, here's the picture, here's a nice little picture of it. Anyways, uh, all I gotta do now is take the antiderivative. Well, the antiderivative of x is x squared over two. The antiderivative of three x squared is x to the third. And I evaluate that between two and negative one. So I just do a bunch of plugging in. Plug, first I plug two into this thing, get a number, then, it's, then I plug negative one into this thing, get a different number, subtract the two numbers, and I'm gonna wind up with negative five over two. And that is going to be the, and I multiply by uh, one third, of course, and that's gonna, that's what it has. So that means that the average value that this function takes on is negative five thirds. So here's the x-axis, here's y equals negative five to negative five halves is the average value that the function takes on. And that is amazing. And now for the very last problem, the average price. Given the demand function, P is equal to D of X, which is 100 E to the negative 0.05 X, find the average price in dollars over the demand interval from 40 to 60. So if I so if I look at that the band the, the demand uh, with this fun, with this uh, function to forty and sixty, uh, what's the average price going to be? Well, I'm just going to take the formula one over b minus a times the integral from a to b of d of x dx. So it's one over sixty minus forty times the integral from forty to sixty of this guy right here, because um, I'm going to pull the hundred out of the integral. Sixty minus forty is twenty, and now I just do a lot of crunch, 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 crunch. I get 100, either the negative two minus either the negative three, which if I plug that into a calculator, I get approximately $8.55. So $8.55 is the average price in dollars over the, for this, for this uh, given, uh, uh, whatever it is, product or something, um, over the demand interval from uh, 40 to uh, 60. That is the end of 5.5. Uh, which is the end of Math 121 at Miramar, San Diego, Miramar College. Yay, congratulate yourselves. Uh, you still got a whole bunch of work to do and suffering and torture, but we've done, we've done, the, uh, we've done the important work, which is, which is to learn the stuff. Now we got to do the really important work, which is to really work the problems and, and actually do them. Because that's when you really learn it. You really learn it when you, when you do it on your own. Um, it's like watching a cooking show versus actually, you know, cooking. It's like going to Snape's class versus actually mixing whatever it is that Snape does. What is Snape? I've got, oh, what, what, potions. Uh, make his potions. Anyway, uh, Snape, by the way, Snape, by the way, he, he, he's, he's a potion master. He's wonderful at, at dark arts, but he actually failed her, uh, herbol herbology because he could not keep his lilies alive. Well, that, that was his problem. Anyway, it's been loads of fun. And... Um, and uh, good luck, good luck, good luck, good luck.